everyone. Thanks for making time today to listen in what NASAP's got broken up for you. This is Kevin Brown. I am the chief <laughs> uh, esports esports specialist. What am I uh, for NASAP? Uh, work also with the Orange County Department of Education. This is what happens when you look at a screen about who you are and then try to talk about who you are. But I'm happy to be among you. I've also got with me Tom Turner on the line. Tom. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. And Tom is the chief executive officer, I keep saying executive, pardon me, chief educational officer with NASEF and the director, executive director of educational services with Orange County Department of Education. We've also got some other guests on the line for you today to talk about the benefits of esports and education as we roll out this really interesting state of the art, never been seen before kind of program. That's right. So if we can go over to the agenda slide, let me see if we can get this to work here. We're all doing this virtually. There we go. There's us. There we go. So we're going to give a little bit about um, what our goals are for the program and what our vision is for esports in education. Um, we got a couple esteemed guest speakers on the line with us. Um, we're going to have them give some stories from the ground. We're going to overview the program itself and talk about the timeline for um, for the uh, applications and then for the onboarding. And then we'll answer any questions and answers that we can throughout this um, webinar. Uh, so like Kevin mentioned, I'm Tom Turner, um, and Kevin's on the line also. We also have Samantha Anton, who's our Chief Operating Officer here at NASEF. And I'm going to now, um, we'll get to the introductions of Dr. Rafferty and Anthony Saba, but if we can um, just talk for a minute about, I'm going to kick this over to the next slide, where we talk about our goals for enriching esports and education. Um, the foundation of esports and education is really about engaging students where they are. We know that a great majority, over 90% of our students, they game in one way or another. They spend more time gaming than they do on their homework. So one of our goals is to find the learning opportunities within that space and then take advantage of the fact that they're already there um, playing and being involved in esports in one way or another. We're trying to make school relevant. Um, students have interests beyond just the game itself. If you look over on the right side of that um, slide, you'll see that there are all these different opportunities, these kind of buckets of knowledge and career opportunities that surround the game and the player. And we wanna make sure that we can attach those student interests and give them some real life relevance and give them an opportunity to um, kind of explore that space and have some experiences within it. And esports is a great vehicle for that. Uh, we know through research that video games and sports, they increase affiliation and engagement in school, and we want to be able to take advantage of that as well. And then we want to make sure that students have these skills that um, might be esports specific when we talk about them, but they are also kind of universal in the way that they can be, be used in workforce preparation in general, kind of those soft skills as well. Um, Kevin, anything you want to add on that besides my wonderful citation at the bottom of that diagram, if you might want to notice that? <laughs> Wish I had that radio ping where I could point to uh, the second to last there, Tom Turner. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> really important note that, again, this is a scholastic program at its roots. All of you on this call have heard a presentation or seen Tom or myself before talking about this. And the root of it really is in this career tech education font where there is outcome into the workplace. I think kids are being a – they're a, able to see how the math, the science, history, foreign language, yes, can help. But when they see the real downstream effects, when they're able to get into, uh, get through a CTE program and then get into an internship and they are using their marketing skills or they are shouting for a program that they're doing at their school and they've got an internship uh, with a local game developer, this is really tangible for them and really does drive the interest in the program. So couldn't be prouder to be behind uh, a more meaningful font of education these days. Excellent, excellent. And to sort of give some context about what this looks like, we're going to now go over to our first guest speaker. Now, this is Dr. Kevin Rafferty. If you want to Google somebody who's doing amazing things in schools, this would be one of those gentlemen or ladies who might be involved in that. I'm Dr. Rafferty. If I can move this to the next slide, is the uh, campus director for Fairmont Private Schools in Anaheim Hills. And there we are. So uh, hopefully, Kevin, that you're there and we got your mic working and you can give us a little idea of what this looks like um, on your middle school. Yes, and thank you for involving me today. Happy to do it. And uh, it's one of those cases in the real world where it's not so much what you know, but who you know. And we were fortunate enough last year 
to actually pilot a nine week program uh, with students at the junior high level in sixth, seventh and eighth grade. And how that happened was a uh, mutual acquaintance that connected me with uh, Kevin Brown of OCDE and of NASEF and his grandson uh, attends our school or attended last year. And uh, so Kevin was kind enough to sync up with us and actually pilot the program uh, nine weeks. Uh, curriculum has been developed around the uh, uh, concepts that were on the previous screen there. And uh, it can be expanded to 18 weeks or an entire school year. So uh, exciting at the junior high level. And I know lots of things are happening at the high school level too. Excellent, Dr. Rapp. You know, um, Kevin, since you were on the ground in that classroom, did you have anything you wanted to add about that? Uh, yeah, I spent as much time as I could, and uh, we uh, gave students across the span of 6th, 7th, and 8th grade a sneak peek. They were uh, a very jealous uh, group of junior hires who didn't get into this uh, uh, class as we were piloting it, but uh, it was great that we were literally in the space of 10 days able to turn on a dime, uh, coordinating with with Kevin to put the curriculum, which already existed to great uh, extent, but packaged it in a way that worked well for our junior high students and uh, very receptive. The students took on the various roles throughout the uh, quarter and were able to uh, hold an open house at the end of the nine weeks that basically uh, about 20 or 30 guests came and they were able to explain from soup to nuts from start to finish exactly what they had done, what they had learned, and all of the various aspects of how esports directly relates to the real world. Thanks, Dr. Rafferty. And I think what I take from that is um, that you use kind of that, that diagram that uh, and Kevin designed that curriculum that surrounded sort of the buckets of workforce. And it wasn't really just, let's play some games and Esports 101, what is this and how does it work? That it went beyond that and it kind of dug deep, uh, deeper into that. So we appreciate your comments, Dr. Rafferty. And I'm going to now move us over to kind of the granddaddy of all uh, schools who have taken on uh, what this looks like in the classroom. This is um, Anthony Saba, who is the executive director of the Samuel Academy. And they, um, in their high school, have adopted the full curriculum, the full high school English language arts curriculum. Um, they piloted it for us. Their teachers gave us valuable feedback and are kind of models of how we want to be able to support teachers in the fellow program. So Anthony, how's it going? It's going fantastic. Uh, thanks for having me here, Tom. It's an honor to be with you guys today. Sure. So you want to tell us a little bit about what it's been like? Um, what have you seen in the classroom and kind of the effects on campus? Yeah, I tell you real quickly, it started two years ago when we just started this after school esports phase. And uh, I ha we only have 500 students. We're a 9 through 12 high school in Santa Ana, 500 students. And, you know, we, we, were, we introduced in front of all the students this idea of having an esports club after school that would just be competitive gaming. And I had over 60 students show up for that and out of 500. And the only thing that we ever had that much interest in was soccer. And so for the first year, we just had this after school club space. But I started to realize that there were kids in that club that who, who struggled in school and that we had a really hard time connecting to their academics. And, and it was around that time that UCI and NASA was talking about these piloting these ELA classes. And I thought, man, this seems to be a no brainer, right? Because English is much more of a skill and uh, you can get better at literacy, reading and writing, no matter what you're reading and writing about, so long as it's grade level appropriate. And so I had this high interest esports topic that I really wanted to pair you know, with academics in the classroom. And so we were proud and happy and continue to pilot these classes and we've had great success. You know, the idea is that these kids are reading books, you know, like Ready Player One and other novels that, that uh, instead of maybe some of the, the traditional classics that and for our demographic at Samuel A. Academy, you know, we have a very underserved population of students who, you know, isn't exactly turned on by you know maybe Catcher in the Rye and books like that that are a little more traditional and that we have always struggled with you know having them read or write about and but when you put these high interest uh, materials in front of them and meeting them where they are like Tom said earlier i.e. esports which is going through the roof in terms of student popularity it really has made a difference on campus it's made a difference so much 
that we had almost twice as many kids preference for our eSports ELA classes this year than we did the year before. So year one, we just had the freshman, sophomore, and junior classes. And now this year, we have the full gamut, again, with even more classes because the student demand has only increased. I think it's important to note out there that, that there is no gaming at all in these ELA classes. It really is designed more to have kids read and write and explore topics around careers in esports, whether it's marketing or business or hospitality or game design. They're not actually gaming in the English classes. The gaming happens after school. And so it really is neat to see the engagement increase when kids actually want to read and write about the things that you're presenting to them. Uh, you know, instead of some of those older texts that may not be real high interest to kids these days. So it's been fantastic for us. Excellent. And what's interesting between what you said and what Dr. Rafferty said, um, you're both doing very progressive things on campus and you may have completely different school profiles and needs with students and talents on your staff. But the, the, the nature of being progressive and use, using something like esports um, as that Trojan horse and that rallying point, I mean, that's something you have in common and it can be successful in different levels, middle schools and high schools, and then with different school profiles altogether, which is pretty interesting. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank um, uh, Anthony and Dr. Rafferty for being on board. Um, if they can stick around, that's great. Um, but I think we, uh, Kevin and I are going to just kind of give an outline then of what this fellow program looks like um, and move forward in the presentation. Now, let me see if we can... Oh, there it is. There we go. Um, Kevin works a lot directly with um, teachers, uh, so I'm going to kick this over to him. But basically, you know, we've been doing this for a couple years, building this curriculum, and then trying to work specifically and intentionally with teachers to make this better. So, in coming up with this fellow program, we're trying to provide some real um, intentional scaffolds to support what this looks like to middle school educators as well as high school educators. Um, Kevin, I'm going to move this here slowly. Next slide, sure. Yeah. Actually, we can probably go even to the next one because it's going to take a couple of seconds for this to cycle. And this kind of gets into the nitty gritty. There we go. That's nice. So, so this like is it. This is us looking for. Tom, you want to go ahead? I'm sorry, I'm stepping on you. You got it. So us looking for ten high school fellows and ten middle school fellows. So at each level, we now have a curriculum that has been state approved at the high school level. We have over the summer developed entire grids, uh, considered like an undergrad program, starting at the uh, sophomore, I'm sorry, starting at the freshman year, going all the way through senior year, an entire program of study that is esports centric, but that accomplishes both career tech educational goals, California State A through G college readiness goals, and even dual enrollment or articulation goals with local community colleges to get kids advanced standing going into post-secondary. So there's a program set up for that, which again is modular, meant to be taken on at any level that a school feels good, but looking for 10 people to consider that and work with us. At the same time, 10 middle school teachers, those who want to take on this curriculum, again, it is available in anywhere from an eight week, nine week uh, quarter, all the way through an 18 week semester that can be flipped into a year if you wanted to take it that far. But looking for the daring sorts, and I'm recognizing some of the names on the line right now, people that I know that are actually using the curriculum this semester have just now started their years and are doing quarters, trimesters, and in one case, one school here in Orange, California, has taken on three contiguous semesters, replaced three math classes with three esports level classes. And so I'm helping hold my colleagues' head together while we go through that. It's a great problem to have, actually putting this. Uh, there are 90 seats that were available and 284 kids that wanted in. So as Anthony and Dr. Rafferty have said, if we allow kids to come into this space and let them focus through their immense interest in esports, they will show up and they will produce the kinds of work we're looking for. So these teachers would get all kinds of support. There is not just the curriculum, but there is implementation support that is uh, in the process. Tom is going to talk a little bit about uh, a, per, a position that we're creating here with an OCDE to help with that. Um, that members then become part of the bigger family. Uh, NACIF is growing. We've gone from 25 clubs and 38 teams 
a year ago, 15 months ago, to well over 300 clubs, tracking to 500 clubs by Christmas, and in 40 states throughout uh, the lower 48 here, throughout North America. So this is amazing. You become part of that larger learning community. At some point, this is going to be collective of, by, and for the people. So we're starting this curriculum now, but these different groups will begin to moderate themselves, take curriculum, take it across state borders, write it for Common Core and non-Common Core states, and land it in ways that are appropriate in their communities. Uh, speaking of communities, this idea that you're giving back, you are recognizing, if you're on this call right now, you understand that kids are into this and there's a reason why this is good for them. It does pull them out of the shadows, all those lurkers at the back of the classroom that just don't feel they've got any skin in that academic game. Um, they see now that there are like-minded individuals. Uh, my middle school kids at Dr. Afferty's school, our battle cry was all minds, all kinds. That's who was allowed into the club. So that's who we're trying to reach. We're growing a community and you're stepping up into one. Uh, and then being recognized. We would like you all to join us at conferences and symposia. It's easy to go up there and you know be the guy, the talking head in the NACEF polo. Everybody expects you to say great things about your program, but it's so much more meaningful when Anthony, when Dr. Rafferty, when one day one of you all goes to these conferences with us and speaks from the heart about what you've done in your communities, that makes so much more a difference to educators, administrators, parents who are thinking about next best steps for their kids. Oh, and at the bottom of that, there's always cash involved. There's a little incentive to uh, compensate you for the time. There's a lot of support going on. I'm going to stop yammering for a second and ask Tom to talk a little bit about that educational instructional coach we've got in the works. Yeah, so um, so far, Kevin has been the one who literally uh, goes across the country to support our educators and our big groups as they start to tackle what this might look like um, in an after-school program or during an in-school, um, middle school, high school, or even down into like sixth grade in some of our elementaries. And he's been that guy. But we recognize the need then to have somebody who is an intentional, scholastic, esports instructional coach. Now, we do offer coaching, but that's, of course, um, the coaching that we're thinking about is not how to be better at League of Legends, but how to be better implementing esports-centric um, and integrated uh, lessons into your daily um, instructional routines. So this person will work directly with teachers and we're in the process now of posting and hiring somebody here to be located in Costa Mesa and then to, when possible, work one-on-one -on -one with our fellows, um, ideally like Kevin said, 10 middle school, 10 high school, we'll see how those applications go, um, and work one-on-one -on -one with them face-to-face, -face, visit classrooms, um, and then for our uh, fellows who are located across the country, we'll be able to have that person work with you virtually. Um, there are some other, um, like Kevin mentioned, other asks, you know, we're looking for you to try out, you know, we have curriculum, we have lesson plans, we have these programs that have existed, but we know you'll have to mold those and we'll have to be flexible with those. So what does that look like? Let's keep that, uh, keep a record of that and the coach will help you do that. Um, as well as, you know, hopefully like Kevin mentioned with, that he did with Fairmont Schools, putting together a showcase and you know collecting and sharing artifacts and contributing lesson plans to the library. All of these things that the coach will be able to organize and keep people responsible for. Uh, and so we are hope we will be hiring that person hopefully in the near future. We all know how HR systems work in our big organizations, so we're just trying to get through this and then provide that support. Um, but of course, the fellows will have the full backing of of NACEF in general, of Kevin and me. Uh, and Sam and the rest of the group, as well as um, our veteran leaders like Dr. Rafferty and Anthony, who are so wonderful to um, to give us their time to help this look better in classrooms. I'm going to move us to the timeline. Now, this is on the website, of course, so this shouldn't be much of a shock to anyone. I'm only shocked when the slide actually moves, but it did. Um, so you can see we launched this a couple weeks ago uh, with the applications becoming available. And then we um, have this webinar today. The, uh, the program applications close on September 20th, so that's less than a month away. It's about three weeks away. Uh, we will be deliberating, deliber deliberating over the applicants over the following week, and then we will um, be able to notify those who have been um, accepted into the fellow program. And we will have our kickoff program that will be virtual, like this webinar, um, on October 8th. So we will be inducting everybody into this inaugural year of the fellow program. 
and uh, sort of laying out the expectation. We're hoping to have the coach by then, but if we don't, then Kevin and I will get everything going and we'll integrate the coach once we have that person on board. Um, anything you want to add to that, Kevin? That's it. It's, those of you on the call already know me. It's, you know, you rub the lamp, you get your wishes. So we're here to support you in lots of ways. So that will not diminish. I think it's only going to grow over time. So we can't, I'm looking at questions mount up right now, which we'll take in just a second. Some of the questions are going to be, it depends. It really will look at the scope and what is necessary, but uh, we are planning again, big things. We really want to see this be successful on your terms in your location. So whatever that's going to take, we're going to be here to support that. Great, great. And I can't see the question. So I think um, if you want to start to get into some of those questions and maybe we can provide some answers here in the last minutes. Sure. Sam, uh, I shall let you take it away. Let's hear another different voice and then either uh, Tom or myself, we can field them from there. Hi, everyone. My name is Samantha Hello. Anton. Uh, I can help volley the questions over to our presenters today. So the first question is, about being able to review the curriculum and the lesson plans. Um, and also the second part of that question is, we have the English lesson plans, but is there a plan to do math or other subjects? Um, I think the lesson plans, Kevin, they're available online somewhere on the website, I believe, right? I think we're going to migrate those over very quickly. Those were moved over a couple of weeks ago to our behind the website site. Uh, and it's just a matter of now making that available. Those are kind of behind the curtain. So one does have to, do we decide one has to activate a club to be able to access all of that? Or were we just going to put them all out there? I think that was our last deliberation point at our last leadership meeting. But mm -hmm. one way or the other, uh, all the, uh, the English language curriculum is all there to the granular level. We are just going through the final loops of approving the last few lessons. So rather than put them all out there piecemeal, it would be strange to see ninth grade and part of 11th grade, but where's 10th grade and the rest of 11th grade. We wanna finish all that, clean that up, but that is there. Uh, in terms of all of the other curriculum, that is a, a larger ask. There are certain things that lend itself more easily to esports, and that's typically in the CTE realm. So lots of the CTE classes that you have in your states already map to what we're doing in the grids that we're proposing, uh, those full court press sort of programs from freshman to senior year. Um, we're in the co process right now, for example, of uh, talking with Florida about what it's going to take to bridge the gaps. There are there are small but interesting gaps between California state standards and Florida state standards that need to be addressed before curriculum can be fully taken on and embedded in a school. That's a short walk and that's us getting together right kinds of educators to talk about how we're going to answer that. So there's a meeting coming up uh, third week of September in Florida to talk about that. And to note, for all of these questions, we will send a PDF um, with the responses. So on the topic of where to find the lesson plans, We'll include any links that are available for that as soon as possible. Um, for the next question, it's, it's asking about from if you're outside of California where the curriculum is not approved yet, are they able to pilot this and sprinkle in classes to show the value? Absolutely. Absolutely. We welcome that. That's exactly what we're looking for. Be seditious. <laughs> Go against the grain. It's kind of what we did to write the classes in the first place, knowing that we were writing all the classes, California state standards for math, science, social studies, art, music were all included from grade from middle school up. And definitely on terms of the high school classes, we had to follow not just those, but ISTE standards, NGSS standards, career tech education standards, all of those were baked into those. So standards were forefront in our mind. So uh, that being said, there's got to be 85, 90% parity between California and any other state out there, Common Core or not. I'm certain we all, as educators, are writing this to that level. So please sprinkle in liberally. We expect that to happen. These are not meant to be prescriptive classes, do it this way or else. It's take what you like, add this as secret sauce to what you're already doing. Uh, if your class changes a little or a lot because of it, that's fine. Wherever you want to go with it, that's what I will help you do in the short term, short to medium term. And this educational instructional coach will help in the longer term to help uh, develop those interesting and bespoke programs for each location. So for the next question, it's um, upon being accepted into the fellow program, when would school sites be expected to begin teaching and starting the course?
Kevin giving an eyebrow to Tom thinking, hmm, that's a very interesting question. Um, timing is of the essence. We realize that it is, we're on the cusp of September here, so most of us have schools up and running at this point. So beginning to sprinkle in lessons, uh, you know, parts of this as modules might be the way to start. Maybe you take on curricula now and you begin to look at how this works after the winter break when you come back for season two in January. So whatever that looks like or however quickly, whether you have uh, administrative direction that says, I want this now, let's make this happen. Uh, I'm here to help <laughs> put a cool towel on your head and take away some of that heat. We can figure out ways to make that happen for you more quickly. But if you're looking for something that is, um, I should say, more organized and more methodical in its outlay that lays in with a curricular pathway that you've got or a lesson plan that you want to work with, let's talk offline about that and see how quickly we can get that up and meet meaningful for you. Yeah, we recognize that by choosing the timeline that we did that it is not always going to be easy to install something big and and have that done in a short period of time in a classroom or on a campus. Uh, we are flexible with that and uh, we are willing to work with whatever timeline, like Kevin said, is necessary for successful implementation where people feel comfortable and that we're growing with this. And I see a couple questions um, asking for clarification. So is it that only English teachers would be able to apply for the high school fellow program, or could they also be CTE or other subjects? <laughs> well, for high school, we, we really are looking at those who are implementing the ELA courses. Now, that does not have to be the course in full, obviously, but um, are taking then even parts of those lessons and integrating them into the classroom. Uh, so that's what we're looking for in high school primarily. And I think this is the last question. Um, is the curriculum designed for an after-school club that meets once or twice a week? They are a middle school teacher. Yes. I will say specifically, uh, I worked with the YMCA here locally. We have 36 sites. 26 are on middle school. I'm sorry. Uh, 26 are on elementary school campuses. The balance are on middle school campuses. And the specific ask was, can you give us something that is eight weeks that is twice a, uh, twice a week? So 16 lessons that is able to be presented by a non-teacher, somebody who does not understand pacing, does not understand scaffolding, but who could take a meaningful content and in an hour, uh, not just corral kids, but give them something meaningful. So there is a, a program up and available to you that is, will also be offered on our website in a non-branded format, but something that can be taken up and worked as an eight uh, or uh, larger eight, 16 or larger week program. And actually, the true last question. Um, so if a teacher is a CTE teacher, in the example of games and simulations, would they be able to work with their language arts teachers on this? Um, how would they go about applying? <laughs> I love that question. Sounds just like the person we'd actually want to apply, somebody who is going to make this work. Um, yeah. And if that's what you're going to try to do, uh, I would I would love to see that happen. And I would be um, I'd be thrilled to take a look at that application and that and your plan to have that um, that English language arts teacher collaborate with you on this project. Lots of questions now coming in about this. Uh, this is great. I, I think. Yeah, we would definitely want to take a look at that. Integration is our greatest dream. I'd love to see uh, the math, the science, the history teacher all sit down with CTE and then begin to figure out through the lens of esports how this works as a united front, how a kid could be part of a cohort and move through all of those different kinds of classes eventually. That's the long, that's the long game. Uh, but working toward that. And I believe that's the last question. Um, there might be some repeats that I skipped, but what we are going to be doing is we're going to be putting together a PDF with all of the responses to share with everyone, everyone in addition to the video on demand. And you will receive an email directly whether you attended this webinar or if you just registered for it. So we will be getting that out as soon as possible. Great. And we know if you're here and attending that you know, you're the type of person who, who might even be considering um, this type of program. We very much appreciate your time. We very much appreciate 
um, the consideration you're giving to this particular program is something that we're super proud of uh, and we're looking for you know a few good people to to help us launch this and to be that initial cohort of educators who are willing to give this a shot all right well with that i do want to thank everybody i want to thank uh, of course dr rafferty and anthony saba for their attendance here today and of course sam for helping put this together and run um, the q a and some of the back channel and of course the amazing kevin brown for all of his knowledge and his participation <laughs> You're trying to make me blush again, aren't you? I know, I know. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you all, everybody. Talk to you all soon. Thank you. Bye.